Starliner astronauts one step closer to coming home after NASA's SpaceX crew, 10 departs for ISS. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, who unexpectedly spent months at the International Space Station, are one step closer to coming home after NASA's SpaceX crew, 10 mission departed Friday for the ISS. Crew 10, which consists of NASA astronauts Anne McLean and Nicole Ayers, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Takuya Onishi and Roscosmos cosmonaut Kirill Peskov, launched from Florida at 6.03 p.m. CDT atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The crew will spend six months on the orbiting platform. Their expected arrival on Saturday means Wilmore Williams and their two crewmates will be headed home as soon as Wednesday aboard a separate spacecraft already docked at the station. It's the end of a long saga for Wilmore and Williams. They reached the space station June 6th on the Boeing Starliner spacecraft with plans of staying about a week before returning to Earth. But technical issues with Starliner led to delays and ultimately NASA decided it wasn't safe for the duo to return home on the spacecraft. So they've been on the ISS ever since. Wilmore and Williams joined NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbunov on their six-month Crew-9 mission when the latter two arrived at the space station in September. They've been conducting research, maintaining the station, and participating in spacewalks. The group was set to return to Earth after the Crew-10 launch that was originally slated for February, but that liftoff was delayed to late March after SpaceX needed more time to get a new Dragon spacecraft online for the Crew-10 mission. Space Fight Elon Musk is arguing with an astronaut and wants to retire the space station early. Here's what to know. However, that changed once again when NASA announced last month it will use an older, previously flown Dragon for the mission, pushing the Crew-10 launch up to mid-March. Over the past six weeks, the joint NASA-SpaceX team has displayed remarkable dedication, adaptability, and expertise in delivering on a unique and challenging mission, Steve Stitch, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager, said in a statement ahead of the launch. SpaceX's repeated cancellations of NASA's Crew-10 mission raised concerns. Recently, SpaceX has repeatedly canceled and delayed NASA's Crew-10 mission, raising concerns about the stability and safety of missions, transporting astronauts to the International Space Station, ISS. Successive delays. The Crew-10 mission was initially scheduled to launch on March 12, 2025, from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, using the Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft. However, just minutes before liftoff, SpaceX announced the cancellation due to a technical issue related to the hydraulic system on the launch pad. On March 13, 2025, SpaceX rescheduled the launch, but this time, adverse weather conditions with strong winds and heavy rain forced another delay. Finally, after multiple postponements, Crew-10 successfully launched on March 14, 2025, carrying four astronauts to the ISS. However, the previous cancellations have sparked concerns regarding SpaceX's operational reliability. Concerns surrounding the Crew-10 mission, these repeated delays not only disrupted the astronauts' schedules, but also raised questions about the reliability of SpaceX's ground support systems and launch vehicles. NASA and SpaceX had to conduct a series of additional safety checks before deciding to proceed with the Crew-10 launch. One of the biggest concerns was that astronauts on the ISS had been stranded for an extended period due to issues with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, making Crew-10 a crucial mission to replace the current ISS crew. What NASA and SpaceX say. Commenting on the situation, NASA stated, launch delays are undesirable, but necessary to ensure the absolute safety of astronauts. We are working closely with SpaceX to identify and resolve technical issues. Meanwhile, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk reassured the public, every mission comes with its own challenges. SpaceX always prioritizes safety, and we will continue to make improvements to ensure the success of every flight, the future of space missions. Although Crew-10 ultimately launched successfully, the previous cancellations highlight ongoing challenges in achieving stable and reliable human spaceflight. NASA and SpaceX will need to collaborate more closely to ensure smooth operations for future missions, particularly with long-term plans such as the Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon. 
With lessons learned from Crew 10, the space industry is moving towards a future with more innovations and improvements to ensure the safety and efficiency of space travel in the coming years. Crew 10 launches for Space Station, setting stage for Starliner astronauts to return. The Starliner saga is one step closer to its end, with the launch Friday night of a SpaceX vehicle that will relieve the astronauts who months ago flew to orbit aboard the now infamous Boeing spacecraft. A mission known as Crew 10 is on its way to the International Space Station, where for the past 10 months, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams have unexpectedly found themselves stationed for an extended stay. Wilmore and Williams, of course, were catapulted into the public eye back in June when the Starliner vehicle they piloted to the space station encountered a series of issues that ended with the spacecraft leaving them behind. Instead of returning to Earth on the Starliner as planned, Wilmore and Williams joined Expedition 72 at the space station and were folded into the Crew-9 mission that arrived in September with two astronauts instead of four. The plan since August has been for the experienced astronauts to return with the Crew-9 spacefarers on a SpaceX Dragon capsule after they completed their own months-long mission, and at long last, that highly anticipated return looks to be days away. The imminent arrival of the four astronauts selected for the Crew-10 mission will pave the way for Crew-9 to depart the station with Wilmore and Williams. Spaceflight is hard, and success depends on leaders of character who choose a harder right over the easier wrong, and who build programs, partnerships, and relationships. NASA astronaut Anne McLean, the Crew-10 mission commander, said during NASA's live stream from the Dragon capsule after reaching orbit, we explore for the benefit of all. Crew-10 launches to Space Station. Washington, four people are on their way to the International Space Station on a typical crew rotation mission that has become enmeshed in political controversy. A Falcon 9 lifted off from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A at 7.03 p.m. Eastern March the 14th on the Crew-10 mission to the ISS. The Crew Dragon spacecraft Endurance is scheduled to dock with the station at about 11.30 p.m. Eastern March 15. During Crew Dragon's separation from the Falcon 9 upper stage, a pan leak could be seen floating away. At a post-launch briefing, Sarah Walker, director of Dragon Mission Management at SpaceX, said the item was a piece of insulation from the liquid oxygen tank on the Falcon 9 second stage, which did not pose a hazard. It's a foam material that did its job on the way to orbit, and then it's okay if it liberates, she said. Crew-10 is the latest in a series of routine crew rotation missions to the station. It is commanded by NASA astronaut Anne McLean, with NASA's Nickel Ayers as pilot. Takuya Onishi from the Japanese space agency JAXA and Roscosmos cosmonaut Kirill Peskov are mission specialists. The four will spend about six months on the ISS. Crew-10 was originally scheduled to launch in February, but NASA postponed the mission in December because of delays completing a new Crew Dragon spacecraft that was planned to be used on the mission. NASA announced February 11 that it would instead use Endurance, a Crew Dragon flown on three previous ISS missions, avoiding further delays in the new spacecraft's development while moving up the launch from late March to the middle of the month. At a March 7th briefing, Bill Gerstenmaier, SpaceX Vice President for Build and Flight Reliability, said problems with a battery on the new Crew Dragon prompted the switch in spacecraft. It turns out the batteries are not easy to get out. It took a lot of capsule disassembly to get the battery out, he said, noting that SpaceX teams have been focused recently on Crew-10 preparations. We'll turn that back around and we'll get ready to get the new capsule ready to go fly. The switch to endurance did cause some additional work before the launch. The Draco thrusters on the capsule has a higher life than those used on previous commercial crew missions, and one thruster in particular showed degradation of coatings that protect it from oxidation, Steve Steich, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager, said at the March 7th briefing. NASA said March 11th that SpaceX performed additional test firings of the thruster. Following successful testing, data analysis and flight rationale were presented and accepted by NASA, the agency stated. The mission faced one final obstacle before launch. SpaceX scrubbed a launch attempt March 12th, less than 45 minutes before liftoff, because of a hydraulics problem with a clamp arm on the strong back, supporting the Falcon 9. NASA said March 13th that workers successfully flushed a suspected pocket of trapped air in the system, 
to correct the problem. Crew-9 return controversy. The arrival of Crew-10 on the ISS will begin a four-day handover period before the departure of the Crew Dragon Freedom, returning the four members of Crew-9. They include NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gurbunov, who flew to the station on Freedom in September. Also on board will be NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore, who have been on the station since June on a Boeing CST-100 Starliner spacecraft. Williams and Wilmore were intended to spend as little as eight days on the ISS, but issues with Starliner extended their stay and led NASA in August to conclude that Starliner should return uncrewed because of concerns about the performance of the spacecraft's thrusters. That decision to leave Wilmore and Williams on the ISS has been revisited in recent weeks after SpaceX Chief Executive Elon Musk, a close advisor to President Trump, claimed in January that he had been instructed by Trump to return the two astronauts as soon as possible and that the astronauts were left on the ISS for political reasons by the Biden administration. Musk and Trump have reiterated those claims several times, including in a joint interview on Fox News February. 18. While Musk has said he approached the Biden administration with a proposal to return Williams and Wilmore earlier, he has not provided any details about that proposal, including who in the White House he approached and when. Former NASA officials, including former Administrator Bill Nelson and Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, said they were unaware of any proposal SpaceX made to the White House. Asked about these claims during the March 7th briefing, NASA and SpaceX officials said their decisions on both the timing of the Crew-10 launch and keeping Williams and Wilmore on the station until now were not driven by politics. We really wanted to get this mission flown before the Soyuz and before we had this critical resupply mission, Steek said of the schedule for Crew-10, referring to a Soyuz crewed flight in early April and a cargo Dragon mission later that month. When we laid all that out, we ended up with March the 12th, he added that planning predated the comments by Trump and Musk. I can verify that Steve had been talking about how we might need to juggle the flights and switch capsules. You know, a good month before there was any discussion outside of NASA. But the president's interest sure added energy to the conversation, added Ken Bowersox, NASA Associate Administrator for Space Operations, at the briefing. Those officials said that NASA and SpaceX looked at options last year to return Wilmore and Williams earlier, including by adding seats to the mid-deck section of a Crew Dragon to allow it to return six astronauts rather than four. When it comes to adding on missions or bringing a capsule home early, those were always options, but we ruled them out pretty quickly. Just based on how much money we've got in our budget and the importance of keeping crews on the International Space Station, Bowersox said, we worked with NASA collectively to come up with the idea of just flying two crew up on Crew-9, having the seats available for SUNY and Butch to come home, and that's what NASA wanted, and that fit their plans," Gerstenmeier said. The best option was really the one that we're embarking upon now, and we did on Crew-9 flying the two empty seats," Stick said, noting the agency followed its normal processes in selecting that option.